Uh, just by way of introduction, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Barry Scott. I'm a retired ELCA pastor. And um, my wife, Julie, who's over there in the corner, and I have been um, members here since May when I retired. And I'm standing in for Pastor Bonnie uh, this week. If you haven't heard, um, she and her family gather together and um, as they mourn the loss of her sister. And so we keep them in our, in our prayers as we go forward. Um, so grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. So today is the final Sunday of Advent, and Christmas will soon be upon us, and it's a time of hope. We're familiar with hope, aren't we? As Webster defines it, hope is to cherish a desire with anticipation, to want something to happen or to be true. Sort of like all those Buckeye fans that you know. You know, their hope lives. Football dreams are dashed for this year, but ah, Hope springs eternal for next year. As a lifelong Cubs fan, I, I know this. Our motto is, you know, wait till next year. And I've had eternal hope all of my life, every year, until finally, finally, in 16, they won the World Series. And so now we begin the next 108-year cycle over again. I love when people came to see me, they would say to me, you must be so excited after 108 years they won this, the World Series. And it's like, well, I haven't been around for 108 years, but yes, I am excited. We hope. And so we get our shots and we wear our masks and we hope for a healed world. We work hard, we hope for a better future for ourselves and for our children. Like Pastor Bonnie, we share life with our family and our friends, and we love and are cherish our family, knowing that this life is finite. And all the while, still firmly holding on, convinced that our hope is in the resurrection to eternal life. We have hope because we know that God's grace and God's great love is there for us, and because of Jesus. So as Andy Dufresne once said, hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. We hope. I got a vivid example of that this morning as I was uh, preparing to come here to worship. Uh, we live in Marysville, so I leave a little extra early just to get here in time. Never any traffic, though. But I was watching the news, watching the uh, Today Show, and they had scenes, and we have watched in horror, I'm sure, as we watch the devastation of the tornadoes that ripped through, especially in Kentucky, and just destroyed towns and lives, and sometimes hope. And they had a story about a man named Jason Bays. He was at his home with his sister, and they were beginning to go through the home and trying to find some of his possessions there. And uh, his sister is there recording um, as he looks around, and there's the interior of his home, the roof completely gone. His, all of his belongings just scattered about, and in the corner was a baby grand piano, untouched. And he sat down and just began to play. Beautiful. Sister scanned the room, showing the destruction, and in the midst of that, sounds of hope. Story right after that was a story of uh, Jim Finch. Jim Finch went to Mayfield, Kentucky, and the whole town all around him is just destruction. He came up from New Orleans. He knew what it was like to have his life and the lives of those you love destroyed. He brought his big smoker grill and a pickup truck filled with food. And you could tell he was uncomfortable. He didn't want to talk about what he was doing. He just wanted to give hope. He was cooking food and serving meals to anybody who wanted it. Just come up and have it. Hope. Very often when I read scripture, sometimes, or very often I should say, uh, something will spark a memory for me, a flashback that is so real that it hits all of the senses, it's palpable. So when I sat and I read verse 41 on Friday after Pastor Bonnie asked me if I could stand in, I read, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And suddenly, very suddenly, I was in a pancake house in Buffalo, on Palatine Road in Buffalo Grove. It was almost 40 years ago, but it felt immediate. I was asking Julie about this as we were walking the other day. She has a faint memory of this happening. So we're sitting there, I'm eating my pancakes in a booth in this pancake house, and Julie, who was very pregnant, I think just a few weeks away from giving birth, and she was, no, I won't say it, she was, <laughs> but you know how it is. And then, and she reaches across the table suddenly and grabs my arm and pulls it hard and says, come over here. And so I, I got up and, and, my, and I said, well, give me a little slack so I can get around the table. And I, and I sat down next to her in the booth and she puts my hand on her tummy and said, feel this. And I could feel our daughter moving around and kicking all elbows and knees and heels and squirming around. It was like there was a jazzercise class going on inside of there. And I tell you, it was electric. Well, along with all the anxiety and all of the uncertainty that looms with the first child, and you probably know what that feels like, suddenly there was hope. That definition, to cherish a desire with anticipation, to want something to happen or to be true, was all real. It was right there, right then. Hope is the gift that the Holy Spirit pours into you when you really need it, when you're really aching for hope. And most amazingly, it often comes to you when you didn't even realize that you needed it. Almost everything I had hoped for in that moment has been realized from my daughter. A life that's filled with love, Strength to find her way through the thickets of life, and loss, and uncertainty. Happiness with her family and in her work. Fulfillment and a future. A future that's filled with hope. And I can't wait till Thursday when they come from New Jersey and our family will be together again. It's a miracle, I think, that with vaccinations and precautions, we can finally safely be together without fear. Even my six-year-old grandson, now vaccinated. We have hope. Advent calls to us in the midst of the weight on our shoulders, and it speaks hope. As we watch the news and we see the pain in the world, we are faced with our own lack of power, like a blanket of deep winter snow and ice, we too can feel weighed down by holiday preparations, by to-do lists, by the suffering of the world, by our own personal struggles. Advent is here to remind us that we cannot save ourselves, and yet there's hope. The best part of Mary's song is this, it is never hope unfulfilled. We hear her bold song to remind ourselves that God has already come to be with us. Just as Mary went to be with Elizabeth, just as we gather together today, just as we gather with our loved ones at Christmas, God comes to be with us and we have hope. Hope is a good thing. Maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. Even in the darkest and deepest disappointments, even when we're betrayed, even when the world looks most broken, we keep this crazy hope inside of us. We keep it alive. That God has been, and God always will be, with us. The Reverend Joseph Peter Matthews is an Episcopal priest in Washington State. He, here's how he put it. That's why I love Advent. Jesus never doesn't get born. We long, hope, wait, anticipate, and we are never let down at the last minute. Every year, Christmas arrives. It's always there, even if we're exhausted, 
even if we're brokenhearted, the light of Christ always comes to God's people, always. So if I don't see you in a few days at Christmas Eve worship, may your Christmas song be blessed with hope. Merry Christmas. <laughs>